Warning, this episode contains mild to heavy, explicit spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Reviews, discussions, and theories about films in horror, sci-fi, and genre. This is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. What's up, everybody? It's The Hardy Construction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, subscribe, hit that bell icon, hit that thumbs up with your host, Comp and Deckard. Today, we're going to be talking about a little bit about nostalgia, about the time of the year, and a very surprising horror movie that usually we, we me and Deckard over here talk highfalutin, high concept, high brilliant movies that we can expound upon for three hours plus. We're not going to try to do that this episode, which is actually going to try to, I think you and I are going to be agreeing to uh, actually uh, recommending a certain horror film that I was Absolutely. completely <laughs> was completely <laughs> against. I was very much yeah. against watching this because you were like, I was running out of movies. It's like, well, I don't want to watch uh, Exorcist Believer because I know who's directing that movie. And I won't even say the guy's name because I, I don't want you to jump out of your window. <laughs> and I don't want to talk. I don't want to watch Saw X. I will eventually th- do those two just by myself because I don't want to put Decker through that. If, unless he takes the challenge, but I, don't, I doubt it. How, so I was how, like, I don't want to watch listen, I'll watch him. I'll watch him. <laughs> I'm just laughing already. I would, I see. I would only do Exorcist Believer because you're the only person that I think would be as funny as, um, as the original director of The Exorcist in talking about it. That's yeah, the only reason. Absolutely. I don't want. I'm not going to talk positive about that movie. Obviously, I know it's going to be bad. But anyway, so I was like, I don't really want to see these two movies. Although Saw X, it, the only positive idea about it is that it's from the director of Saw Six, and I know that's very strange of saying that, but Saw Six was no, no Saw Six. Saw Saw is it Six? With a guy, yeah, I think it is Saw Six, the same guy, mm-hmm. Kevin Gruert, mm-hmm. whatever his name is. That was a good one. Uh, anyway, I was like, nah, so then you were like, what about VHS 35? And I was like, I thought you were like saying a joke. I was like, what? Because <laughs> I was like, I seen all of the VHS movies and it's been diminishing returns on each one of yeah. them. Like, there may be one or two stories out of the whole continuation. Mm-hmm. There was one about, like, I think VHS, one of the follow ups, there was like a school. One where it was like these, these, uh, uh, um, like it was like a run by a cult and it was like an action one and it was dope. It was like an Asian one. It was dope. Then there was one that yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. I can't even remember them. They were just like, oh, I just, I remember seeing right, the last right. one. I was like, this is terrible. But people on Twitter, are like, this VHS is the best one. I was like, you must be out of your mind. Like, I think it was 94 or something was the last one. And I was like, maybe yeah. besides the rat one in the sewer was okay. But other than that, I'm like, nah, it's just laziness. Besides, the first one was good because it was different. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like that, they had a haunted house one in that one. They had like um, mm-hmm. the 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 one about the girl who was like sort of um, she's like this monster, and they did a right. spinoff movie for that, which was okay. But anyway, oh, they did. I didn't even know. I didn't even know they did a spinoff for that. That was probably they was, did. Like, it, the was best, a co- it was a it was a pretty good movie yeah. actually. It was a good movie. Okay. I think it was called Siren. It was the the movie was called oh, Siren. Oh, she's a siren. Okay. okay. Yeah, it, the the spinoff was pretty good. They tried to make it all, a whole big backstory, which was kind of dumb. But the movie was all right. It wasn't as good as the story, but it was it wasn't crap. So that's what I'll give them. Right, it's like, right, right. so with this, I was just like, I don't know. I was like, bro, I won't do this episode because <laughs> I was like, I won't watch this by myself. But like, I don't try to force Deckard into watching anything with this channel anymore because I don't want to force anybody to see. Me. If I see. I've done this in the past where with my old co-hosts, if I saw recommended a movie and it was so bad, I'd be like, yo, do not, I, I, we're not going to do the episode. Don't worry about it. Or yeah. I'll do the episode by myself because I don't want to put people purposefully through something bad unless we know it's bad and we can kind of have a rant about it. But I would yeah. not like if it's a bad, bad movie, like movies where you can't even try with it. Like, I don't mm-hmm. like I don't want to put anybody through it because I don't want to see a bad movie just for the sake of seeing bad movies. I don't know. There's plenty of channels like Red Letter Media that does that. But they, they're they with friends and they get drunk. Uh, we're doing this right, like right. from separate areas. So that's not going to happen. But anyway, so I ended up watching VHS and I was like, I was telling Deckard, I was like, listen, I'll let you know if the first two. You know, segments, because usually four segments with a wraparound. I'll be like, right. I'll let you know if the first two are good. I'll let you know that they're good. So then you can kind of go ahead. And so I was watching the first two. I was like, yo, these are good. I was telling them right, through right, uh, right. Uh, chat. Then I saw the third yeah. one. I was like, yo, this is pretty good. And then I saw the fourth one. I was like, yo, this was pretty damn good. Like, I was like, sur- I was like surprised. Like, color me right, surprised right, right, because right, right. Yeah. I was not expecting And we're not going to go through every minutia of the, ep- of the film. It's going to be mm-hmm. a pretty hopefully short episode, but uh, I I was shocked. So I'm glad Deckard yeah, yeah. actually watched it too. Because I uh, how many yeah, yeah. how many VHSs did you actually watch before this one? Did you watch I think all of them? I, or just... 
I definitely watched the first one because when okay. the first one came out, it was it was a new thing. It was like right. obviously there's been anthology films before and like you know found footage. Or yes, if, if that's what this kind of movie is, this it's a found. Footage this is movie. it's all it's I mean, all found footage. It's all POV okay. found footage. PO, POV and so, but it was interesting when the first one came out because it was a new kind of like thing quirk, you know, VHS, and it was like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. It's all and, nostalgia, and right? Nostalgia, and it had like the you know the uh, the tracking and the tapes like being all like you know bad that's quality. From our so era, like that's right, from our, our era, era from like so editing like, on VHS to VHS, bro. Yeah. I'm a dinosaur, exactly. so, I guess, when kids hear that. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'm, I'm up for this. So I remember watching the first one, and I was like, oh, it was good. It was like, they, you know, it wasn't too long. Every, epi- every like, segment was, like, a decent, um, you know, length. And it had, like, pretty good stories, c- kind of creepy stories. Like, that. the one you were talking about with the siren, I remember that was a little bit, yeah. like, creepy and scary. So I was like, all right. And then I remember they just kept coming out with VHS VHS. I don't know. I don't even know the titles, the years, or whatever the fuck. Um, yeah, because but... I think it was it was hand in hand. Like it was something that came out. It basically came out at the same time was VHS, and then the thing called ABCs of Death. Right. Where ABCs right, right. of Death. Um, there was only two of them. I loved the first one because it was mm-hmm. there. All the shorts in there were like three minutes long, and they had twenty six yeah, yeah. letters to fill out. And right. there was a great variety. Some sucked, yeah, obviously, but there were some really good films done in three minutes. The only one that I think is still, to me, the worst of all time, Ty West did one. Mm-hmm. Uh, M is for Miscarriage. I, I dare, mm-hmm. I defy anybody to watch it because each, each person, each director of every short film got $5,000 budget to make their mm-hmm. short film. And I'm telling you, Deckard, if you watch Emma's for Miscarriage, you're going to be like, where did that $5,000 go? Because I remember mm-hmm. I asked um, um, my co-host Danny before. I was like, where did that money? He's like, that shit must have went up his nose or something. Because the the premise of his short was, this three minutes, you get $5,000 for it. A girl sitting on a toilet, she stands up, and then you see blood in the toilet. And that was it. And I was like, you got $5,000 to make that? There's no fucking way. And I was, this is oh. Ty West. He knows I what think, to do. I, I might you know have remembered I mean? that. I think I remember. I, I definitely saw one of the abcs of death i think it was the first one i don't to be honest i don't think i got through all of it bro but i, I remember <laughs> there, there are very good ones but they yeah, no, there's no yeah, more yeah. abcs of death for some reason they just stopped at number two but we get a lot of right. vhs ones for some reason right. and for me they've been mostly missed and hit uh i thought there was an interesting one in 1994 where there was like a girl who was um buried underground and you gotta hear a woman's voice and i thought Because this is my idea of what VHS horror movies are, okay? This is what they've done, uh, like, basically like a Jason Voorhees template or Halloween template. A group of obnoxious teenagers, right, would have Mm -hmm. camcorder on. You find this, you hear um, a scary story about a demon or some sort of supernatural thing that happens. It happens, you die, that's what happens. That's that happens in every single fucking one of these movies. Oh, and it's just like, mm. they can't even try to do something different. Like, maybe not do one supernatural story. There's almost one that's like that here, almost. But there was one like that in 94 where it was like a girl who's stuck on the ground. And I thought that was going to be the short. Like, I thought it was going to be more of terror instead of like a ghost shit. But they let me down with that crap too. But with this one, thankfully, um, I, I think this this film holds up. Not as great, but I think it's as good as an entertainment as the first film. So why don't you, uh, why don't you just, like, let's just run through and talk, talk about VHS, um, 80, um, 85. Tell me a little bit about it. Right. Yeah. Um, just, just to start it off, I, I usually, sometimes I'll, I'll like watch certain reviewers online, like, and I'll like, like, you know, Chris Stuckman, obviously you know him. He's like. He does reviews and he doesn't do as many reviews now. He only does like he only does reviews. He's in the middle of directing he, a film, right? He's doing his own found footage he is. movie. He's doing his own film. But he also he also like a couple of years ago he was like, I'm gonna stop doing negative reviews of movies. I'm exactly. only gonna do movies that I like. Fair enough. Because he was because he was like, I, I I just I didn't like like shitting on movies. So he's like so anytime he's trying he to review, get in the business, you know what I mean? So I understand. Right, exactly, that. exactly. So anytime he does a review, you're like, Okay, this is a movie that he liked. So he did one on this, and I was like, wait a minute. He did one on VHS 85. Let me yeah. see what he said. So he was like, yo, this is good. So I was, I was like, that's why I kind of recommend it to you because I was like, oh, you know, if he kind of says it's, you know, I, he's not always correct, but I'm like, I take his, you know, 
his reviews like fair enough. with some fair you know like I've I, not I, I've never watched one video of his face, so I wouldn't know, but he seems like a nice guy. I did see it well, uh I saw a clip of one of his short films where and they just keep laughing about how he runs. You gotta watch it, but uh, oh, but go ahead, okay. please continue. Anyway, Stop. so I was like, All right, that sounds cool. And again, I'm I'm open to the idea of VHS. Right. Because it's 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 just a cool concept. Even if it's bad, it's like at least you, you get to watch something. You get to watch like Different, directors yeah, try. Variety. They they they're trying something. You know what I mean? And right. I'm like, I'd rather watch that than just watch like garbage. So and this and it has a it has a cool like concept. So right. the, pretty much what the movie is 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 it's segments that are split up. I, I forget how long each segment is. Maybe like mm-hmm. twenty minutes. Um, and it 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 has a has a certain uh, each it has a certain theme that each segment is found footage and this specifically is obviously it's called VHS so it's the person that has that has the camera the POV of the person they're recording on like beta cam or whatever VHS recorder camera and we're seeing it through their point of view and and the the film or the video looks like green or like old and like pixelated and it has like mm. the tracking and so um pretty much usually the stories are each story is different but this one was was cool and i don't know if the first one was like this but it kind of had an ongoing theme throughout the entire film because there's 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 one main story it's almost as if someone recorded over i think that's what the concept was that there was a a videotape that was created it was it's like a it's like almost like a documentary or like a a television like special right yeah, it's called and, uh, Total Copy slash Frame Narrative by David Bruckner. By David Bruckner. And so that's, let's say, like, that was what the, the video cassette, that was what the main video cassette content was. Right. And then all these other stories are, like, recorded over it. So that every time a story finishes, it, like, cuts into the original content and you see that story play out. So it's, that whole narrative is, we see the beginning and the end of that first narrative on top of the segments so that mm-hmm. that was a cool thing for me because it's it sort of like it kept me interested in the movie yeah in the entire movie because you're like i, I want to continue watching what happens with this original storyline on top of these other storylines yeah and, it's, um, it's like a wraparound but it's really interspersed through each uh short interspersed. When, every time and they f- they finish every time they finish it just sort of just like cuts in and then there's what's cool about it and it's it's an idea that I had for this documentary that I'm doing, but obviously other movies have done it where like uh, just a random commercial of like from the 80s will come on. Right. Mm. Like out of the blue. And I like that they did that in there. And I was like, oh, that's what I, it's an idea that I had. But obviously I know that's been done before, but it's a cool idea. Like it just, it just breaks up the whole like, you know, experience of it. Um, So I think this wraparound is basically your typical Mm -hmm. um, uh, discovered science fiction monster gets right. too big and destroys and escapes the plant that's that's basically what the wraparound is um i will say right. when i f- when that first image came up and you see this it's it's like a little kid but he's like covered in moss or slime or some shit and he's sitting mm-hmm. on a like a sofa watching tv i thought it was stop motion i didn't realize it was like a dummy because right. it looked mm-hmm. like it it just looked so peculiar and strange it was kind of it was very yeah. unsettling but um oh, what would you what would you rate that um, the total copy frame narrative one? Because I think it I think it was done really well. I think I think oh, I some think it of it was obviously excellent. yeah. I think some of it was kind of uh uh not because it is uh interview kind of stuff like doc. And this, this is not going to be perfect because yeah, it's yeah. obviously eighties cheese kind of stuff. Right, um, right. Some of the acting was a little bit over the top, especially like the main guy. I think everybody else kind of acted normal and realistic, especially when they're cutting him back and forth with the woman that they're interviewing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Him, he's a little, he reminded me of like Michael Bay, kind of like the way he was yeah, talking, yeah. which is pretty a funny. Bit, a little bit, but I, I thought it was, I still thought it was like excellent. I just, I like the framing in this thought, one because a lot of the was, other framings weren't very good. I thought it was great. I thought um, we'll talk more about like the style of it, but like sure. the thing that I really thought it was great about. First of all, I didn't understand necessarily the story of the of the uh, the total copy frame narrative. I didn't okay. understand like what that was, what the creature was. It, f- it looked like something from like body snatchers, you know. When, yeah, like, and the, in the wiki, like... in the Wikipedia, it says a narrator presents a documentary on a team of scientists at Stamer University studying a mm-hmm. shape shifting being they call Rory. So oh, it's okay. still not explaining what the fuck it is. I don't even know so how it came that, to be. Yeah, 
it's something that just like throws you in the middle of it. You don't even know right. what why they're studying this thing. It's just that they're studying and making like a little documentary about it. And w- what I loved about it was that they really made it feel like it's like those mid early 1980s television mm-hmm. special things that you watch are like those um what are they called like uh infomercials show you or... in sc- infomercials oh, oh, oh. yeah okay right or like a documentary they show you at school an educational thing where it's like oh, okay right the they do everything perfectly like first of all the way they shoot it they they, they obviously they shoot it on like a some sort of old VHS or yeah, it Beta looks Max legit to make, yeah it looks legit but also what they do which was very, which was really good is if you could tell that they did a lot of research on like looking at studying those types of films and like recreating Mm -hmm. it. It's like even the way like the, there's a host that comes out and narrates it and like his voice sounds like a person from that time. Like that would be narrating it. it. And the audio will go back and forth and it sounds like like that when they're talking, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. But even like his, even like the tenor of his voice, like you, Mm -hmm. you would picture, you would know who that guy was if you were like living in 1985. Like that's the type of guy that they would have doing that on TV. And also what they do is like every time he would like go, it would cut to like the actual documentary and not him like narrating. What they used to do with like in the 80s, they would like talk to this to like talk to the audience and then they would Mm -hmm. pause for like three seconds and just stare at the audience and then cut. Yeah, and I, yeah. I realized that they did that in this. I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is this. It makes you feel like you're it watching. It was solid. It. If you, it was absolutely it, you, solid. So that's what I really. That's what I loved about it. On top of like the actual just like stuff that was going on, like the story, like you, it was mystery. It was a, like there was a mystery too because you, they didn't really explain what was happening, but at least it was still like intriguing, you know. Yeah, it had it had like elements of the thing and even creep show. Right. You know, when um Stephen King's characters getting covered by moss, yes. it had that sort of disgusting look to it. It looked really cool. Right. Like the fact that I thought it was stop motion the first part because you mm-hmm. you just see the Rory kid sitting in the table or at the sofa, and I was like, what right. the hell is that? Like, what am I looking at? It looked really weird because right. then there was parts where in the different sections, like it's it'll have a face and it'll make a face to look mm-hmm. like one of the other guys that are working at the at the um science lab and right. but he they're like oh my god how did he see they, it's only a one-way mirror so then they start putting it together he can see through all of us he can he can see through the right, walls right. and everything which is even more mm-hmm. creepier so i thought that really mm-hmm. worked i think it's a really unsettling and very cool short and uh, and obviously it ends the way that it will usually end this type of uh, science fiction yeah, usually yeah, yeah. the movie will go on and then some like hero will come on and stop it or not but i thought that it was really cool the way that like what the guy was trying to like they made a big deal about it at the end when the scientist was running out and he had like blood on his hand and he's wiping it on the walls right, and you right. think about all those science right, fiction right. movies like the thing when you when they go into the other you know station and there's blood everywhere and they're like what the hell happened here and they're right. showing that this guy ran and put his hand on the wall and he couldn't even get out of the room because his right. uh, the machine wouldn't um recognize his handprint and i'm like why couldn't anybody else right, just right. put their hand on it but whatever but i thought it was good i thought it was yeah, solid yeah. i i would give it up do you have anything else to say about that one no, I just, I just, um, I just loved how it like kept progressing and, and it just, it, for me, the most, the, the thing that I loved about it was just like how they recreated that, that type of film. And yeah. then the ending I liked when like it's, shit started to go like haywire and it started to like kill people and stuff. I felt like that was cool. But again, up until then, we didn't really know what was going on. We didn't know what they were talking about necessarily. We like, we saw this mm-hmm. shape shifting pod type thing like on the couch and we're like why the fuck is it in a couch yeah. like, i i would expect it to be like in a, a more like a on a slab or something but right. for some reason it was like but i guess it was because they wanted to they wanted it to watch the television yeah i don't know but it's so, weird because yeah, um, i think they were they were introducing human ideas to it and that's like an I argument they have they're okay. like oh we shouldn't have you know we shouldn't have done that okay. but i would I give it a that. solid seven out of ten what would you give it yeah i give it a 6.5 pretty good so the next one we're moving on to is no wake which is a typical mm-hmm. sort of um obnoxious uh I, I i guess they're college kids uh going right. to um this one's directed by mike p nelson and it's like college kids going to it reminded me also of creep show part two with the uh although it doesn't Correct. have like a piece of oil you know attacking them yeah, in the yeah, water yeah, yeah. um but this is basically uh, going to um, what is that? Is that's a lake, right? I guess it's a lake. It's a lake. It's a lake. Yeah. So they go to a lake, and there's all these signs saying, "Don't go into the water. Don't go into the water." I'm like, "Oh, this is." I thought it was going to be basically a remake of that creep show thing, and mm-hmm. I, I just know myself. 
visiting you if you ever been countryside i would never jump into a lake ever because when i hear about that bacteria, no. we were just talking about bacteria before with the bacteria that goes up your nose and eats your brains hell no no thank yeah. you <laughs> if it's like regular no i way. feel bad for anybody that's wanted to have a good time swimming and then their brains got eaten um but anyway to, to get away from that real life horror uh this had a yeah. couple of, of friends i think it was seven people right because i think it's a very it's a very important number to the film mm -hmm. um this movie's right, actually right, split right. up it's like it's it like is. 10 it minutes is. and then they split off the last 14 minutes and i think they do it effectively um i thought that was really well done they do like, it, to a point to a point yeah right to a okay point. fair but, enough but so um why, why don't yeah. you talk about it yeah so so it's pretty much uh it's a like you said it's, it's a group of young young uh adults they're going to like a a lake it, it reminded me of like you said that creep show 2 uh -huh. friday 13th where they go to like yeah. this lake and they and they're like uh there's one guy that's that obviously has a vhs or beta cam and he's recording and you know there's one you know he's always recording one girl that i guess he likes and she's like why are you recording me whatever and so they end up um going on like a speedboat and one of them is trying to um what is it called ski? Wait, is it water not wakeboard ski. yeah water, water skiing. skiing right yeah okay she's trying to water ski and she keeps falling off so at that point i'm like and they're all on the boat at this point i think oh no, no there's, there's two, two and there's that, two of them that are off so there's five of them on the boat right. and two of them that are on land in the tent it's it's the, the guy in the camera his sister is off with mm -hmm. her boyfriend i believe somewhere else off right, in a right, tent right, off right, on the right, land right. but we don't see them because obviously we're with the main guy right so then so then the girl keeps falling off the ski and they're like try again try again so at this point i'm like Okay, it's either going to be some creature in the water. Right. Something's going to happen. Something's about to happen, bro. Because we can't... The thing that I really loved about this one was that... Um, and it, it kind of happens through all the all the segments. Is that the way that the, the camera... Like, it's... The camera's operated. Like, obviously, they're trying to make it feel like it's... Like, just a regular guy, can, you know, moving the camera around. And, like, making it look like just, like, shoddy camera work. Because it's, like, some guy... Just a normal guy shooting it. And it's like mm -hmm. VHS, but it, the way they do it, like they make it feel like it's like that, but it's actually they hit all the marks. Like when yeah. someone's speaking, the camera zooms in. I'm like, that's not easy to do, and to make right. it look like it's you know naturally. happening organically, you know, naturally. So right. I'm like, that's the first thing I was like, this is really good the way they're doing this. And then secondly, when when she starts to go, she starts to go down. You know, she's she's jet skiing. I mean, she's uh uh water skiing and then all of a sudden she just like you hear a shot ring out and then she just like falls mm -hmm. in the water and everybody's like what's going on what's going on and then at that point i was like oh, i think she got shot and then they go up to her to pull her in and she's like there's blood everywhere in the water they pull her in and then they just start getting sniped you yeah, you keep I mean? hearing the like, um. I forget what the phrase is, but it's a year not ricocheting, but you hear like the reports of the gun or something like that just right, going off your right. pop and you're like Root! and then people get hit and i was like holy people shit like hit. it was like it was really like i thought it was legitimately scary but i thought it was gonna be yeah, a short too. short because of how no, can no. you stop off somebody shooting you because then i was like where's the where's it gonna go from here like where's it you yeah, know yeah. is the camera gonna be taken by like psychopaths and then they're gonna be it's right. gonna be the rest with them and stuff um right but it's it's there's they take an interesting turn with this and what is that turn yeah it's um the turn well it's very effective the way that that we're we're seeing like because obviously we're seeing it through the point of view of the camera because whoever is wow. holding the camera has ducked into the boat and it, so the camera's like kind of like on its side and and we just keep hearing the bullets like hitting the boat and then killing people and people falling and then and then eventually the person gets shot who's on camera right mm -hmm. and then the camera just stays there so you're like fuck they're all dead yeah like where they, can we go they, with they, this they, they all get shot, so I'm like, I'm waiting for like someone else to come in, you know, like you said, from the shore or something. And then all of a sudden, like one of the characters just like sits up, you know what I mean? And we're like, what? And then the guy that we saw die, yeah. The guy that we saw die, and then all of a sudden, everyone starts. One girl gets her fucking jaw shot off, <laughs> yeah, and then she's she just able, up. she's able to get up with the jaw hanging off. The girl that was in the water that got shot first, she gets in the boat. She's like, help me up, and we're like, so I'm like, what the fuck? what happened are they zombies like, that's I what i thought get too, it. Yeah. i guess they are so technically like, yeah technically they are so then they 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 start like trying to figure it out like how can we how can we still be alive you like some people have like some of their like fucking intestines in their hands hanging out yeah like, yeah yeah the one guy has his brain 
sticking out of his head. Out, right, yeah. And then, so they're like, let's And they feel fine. Shore. They say they never felt more alive. That's the funny part right. of it. They never felt more alive. So then they 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 head to shore and then they, they go to the tent and they realize that the people in the tent are dead. The... Who was it? The the brother, brother and the and, no, not the brother, the girl, the sister and the and the boyfriend. The sister and, and so they're like And then they see know, a big these, seven written in blood on their right. camper or where their truck or wherever they came in. So so they they're like they're like, How come they're dead but we're still alive? And then they're like trying to figure it out and they eventually figure out that it's because they went into the water. Right. That the water somehow either like, you know, regenerates them or they're able to have some sort of power some ponce de leon uh, kind of thing you know what i mean like secret right 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 thing. and exactly and... so they're go ahead go ahead no no and then so they like um so this is this is the part where i was like oh this is this is gonna be good because Same, they're like bro they're like oh We're did you get the license basically because like, oh, yeah. the guy was recording because because the person that was shooting them came in like a truck and and before they were getting shot at, the, they were like, "Who's that over there?" And then the guy zoomed in, and then they were like, "Did you get the license plate?" And the guy was like, "I think I did." And then so I was like, "Oh, if this is gonna be good, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're gonna yeah, go I back and that. they're gonna, you know, they're gonna fucking seek revenge on them." So I was like, "Oh, this is gonna, this is even better." And then yeah. it just ends because <laughs> even even though it does not go where I think it was gonna go, because yeah, yeah. I was still ev- I was still actually, um, like. I was grateful with the ending that they gave us anyway. Because um, although the other ending would be just as fun, I think, because I thought it was just going to be mm-hmm. them coming to the eventual place that we would see when it comes back. Um, so right. we it cuts to, like, we, we end up seeing um, another movie, but let's let's just stick with the ending of No Wake first. Is after we, because okay. uh, they, they smartly cut the ending off. Because I was like, oh, no, don't tell me we're not going to fucking see an ending to this short. Because I was like, yeah. don't, you know, yeah. don't tease us like this. But when we do, right. after we see, um, um, sorry, God of Death, we'll get to that mm-hmm. one after this. But it cuts right. to like a house party. And you see a whole bunch of people right. partying, all these like sort of rich, not, I want to say rich, I guess they're elite in their own way. It's more of like a, mm-hmm. it just looks like a gathering of like highfalutin kind of family. You know what I mean? They're not like uh, blue bloods or anything like that. But they just look like you know people that would sneer at you if you weren't part yeah. of their family or some shit like that. And they're all you know wearing their Sunday best. They're having this sort of get together. We don't know what it. I think is the the daughter's sixteenth birthday or something like that. She's this girl with short black hair. She looks as proper as you would think she would look. And they mm-hmm. start you know they start talking about like this sort of initiation or this family mm-hmm. tradition. You're like, what are they talking? And I, automatically I was like, because. I'm watching yeah. this. I didn't yeah. think it was part of the. You don't know that it's still part of No Wake. It's it's it, it seems like it's its own thing because obviously God of Death shortage just finished, so you think another shortage just started. Right. So exactly. I'm watching it. And I'm going, okay, what is this about? And then so they put a tape in to the into the VCR player, and it's the mm-hmm. girl's point of view recording herself killing the the uh, sister and the boyfriend of the original crew in the beginning of the short, and then her right. taking aim at the people at the or actually she she just shoots them and then she kind of walks off screen, and I was like right. holy shit I was like that is fucking great. But before that scene even happens, the when I when you really do get clued in is because she walks outside and then she gets shot with a little water gun. The same mm-hmm. water gun that these people were drinking um, alcohol with. So right, right. we're like, okay. So then we see the little kid shooting her with the orange water gun. I was like, what the hell is this? And she goes, oh, and the kid is like, where'd you get that from? And she he points off to a van that like mm-hmm. the same van of the kids from the No Wake one. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, shit. They're going to come back and kill everybody. That's what I thought. I thought it was cool because then I thought it was going to be some sort of horror, but on their, the, the other side of the villains and stuff. Right. Exactly. Either way. Exactly. Uh, the party commences. We see the videotape of what she did, and then the cops come. The cops, you hear, obviously the the kids that got killed must have alerted the police to they come. They probably called to do the cops. This. Yeah. But before that, they we we they, we also realize that they're kind of like a cult because they right, have yeah. um they have um seven uh, tattooed like on their on like their wrists. Yeah, their right? goal is to and kill they, seven people each time or something like that. Right, and so they do like a little chant thing or something where like they all raise their hands and they have. So at that point, I was like, "Oh, these guys are they're in a cult." And then they watch the video, and then I'm like, and then they're like, they're like uh, guffawing over it, like they're like, "Oh, really into like her <laughs> that she's killing word. these Gaffoyne people." Is true. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, these people are sick. They're yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah. 
you know and then and then that's when i started to put together like I, I obviously when the kid got the gun but then i was like oh she's killing the people that were in the tent that we didn't see you know we were on her yeah point right of view, but um so then yeah you like you said then the cops come right and so then you start to, to realize that they're really crazy because they're like this is what we've been waiting for you totally get waco. In the old te- waco texas type of feel yeah where they're like this death cults and they just start handing out machine guns and you're like oh these people are fucking nuts and right. then and then we're following a guy obviously a guy's recording this and so we follow one character i think her name is ruth and then she's sort of like the she was the one in the video that was shooting the kids so mm-hmm. she's kind of like the main culprit or whatever and they go into a bedroom and the guy's like ruth is like come on this is this is where we're gonna do it here's here take the gun and he's like i don't want to die and like she's like stop being a pussy like she's really like she these like people have these people have no fear of death, and to me, no. I was just like, "Oh man," because I thought like I wanted these people to suffer. You know what I mean? But right, if right, you right. have characters like have no fear of death, like, "Oh, this is gonna be pretty quick." Then, but please continue. Yeah. So then, so then the guy was like, "I don't want to die." No, she's like, "Take the gun," and she's like, "Fine," and she shoots him. She, she oh yeah, because he was a pussy, him. right? And so before that, they have they start having a gunfight, uh, a shootout with the with the, like the cops, and so you see like different members of the family or whatever they are. They're like shooting and you see them getting taken out and it's like a whole, they're just like going at it. Like they're like psychopaths. You know what I'm saying? So when she, she finally kills the guy with the camera, she's like, the camera like falls and it's like a shot on her and she's waiting for the cops to come in the room. So she's just there like by, you know, like stooped down by the bed and then the cops come in and she like fires and they just, they kill her. Mm -hmm. She just dies. You know what I mean? And then, and then the camera just sits on her, like some blood drips down her, you know, uh, her mouth. And then she's there. So you're like, oh, she's fucking dead. And then like the cop checks her pulse and then he leaves and then it just stays on her. And then out of nowhere, she like comes back to life. And then you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Because the, the, the kid with, was probably shooting at her. They probably filled the water gun with the water from the lake. Mm-hmm. So she was able to like come back to life. Um, and so then the cops come in, um, and she doesn't get shot again, right? I don't think so. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. So then the cops come in and they're like, they fucking take her and arrest her. That's pretty much the ending of the, of the, this segment. And it kind of like, it closes out that, those first, that first story in this story. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, I, I, I was, I was hoping that it would be the people coming back. And just wreaking havoc on them, right? I mean, I think that's what that's what kind of you were hoping for. Yes. So I thought it was going to go a certain way, just like you said, like like I had said in the mm-hmm. beginning. Um, but mm-hmm. I, because that that is, I couldn't even say it was a letdown, but I thought it was so brilliant that they took the they figured out why the water kept them alive, so they decided mm-hmm. to do that, and that girl is basically like gonna outlive her jail sentence maybe she might just outlive the jail being <laughs> yeah, destroyed yeah, which yeah. is even better sort of uh ending for that sure horrible sure. witch but um i thought yeah. it was a solid solid short dude. i thought it was like um did you, uh, uh, uh what rating would you give it out of 10 i give this an eight man same same I, an eight out of I 10 give this an eight one. this this and the, and the first part yeah i probably give it an eight yeah, together yeah, yeah. because because um the fact that you 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 hated that girl in oh, the yeah. second part ruth and you you hardly like you just got introduced to her and you already hated her oh yeah yeah you just she saw was so how smug, ruthless yeah. she was smug Absolutely. and ruthless and and then you're like fuck this is this is well done um and again yeah it, it's un it was an unconventional ending to what you, what, what we were expecting mm. um but it's fine i mean at least it, it was something different you know i would have been fine with them coming back and just you know it would have been cool to see them, the kids coming back and like them shooting them and nothing happening to them. But the you fact that I mean? they and went, they, yeah, they went against yeah, yeah. sort of what you expected. I thought sure, that was still actually sure. pretty good. But I, I, I would have, I good. would have loved that too. I, I would have loved that too because yeah, yeah. they set up the bad guy pretty quickly for literally for five minutes. They made somebody you hate them that much. I thought that's exactly. pretty well done. Um, so yeah, yeah that's that's a solid one, and that's why I was like, yep. oh shit, this was great. So um, yep. let's move on to God of Death, ri- written and directed by mm. Gigi Salguerero, um, a mm-hmm. Mexican short. Um, and yep. I was like, I was like, ah, oh, I was pleasantly pleased because whenever you see um, like a Latino horror, like in these in these mm-hmm. movies, like these um, these sort of variety films, they go all out, mm-hmm. dude. They just go, and I was really 
I was actually very impressed that at least for 85% of the short, it seemed more mm-hmm. of a realistic horror film before mm-hmm. it kind of went where it went. Um, the premise, why don't you, and, why don't you just kind of briefly talk about what this one is about, God of Death. And the thing, I think that made me also pleasantly surprised was that like the, the depiction of like the, his, the, the Mexicans and the Hispanics yeah. and Latinos in it felt realistic. Yeah. And it I was think funny it was because too. I, it was funny, and I think it was because the director is she's Latino. I like the funny thing is I know this girl because I follow yeah. her on Instagram. Oh, great! Her name is Gigi. Yeah, she's a she's a director, a female director. I followed her for years, and I've just seen her like grow. Like Shutter had this um, Halloween special last year. Of, like they went through like all these movies, and they had her. At, you know how they have like people talking about movies. Right. She was one of them, and I'm like, damn, this. I remember when she was just like sort of like starting out, and now she's like, and she's actually in the film. She's the the reporter, oh, the, the young oh, reporter. Oh, I see her. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's the one that That's trips her. when she's walking. Yeah, she's funny. She trips. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So, um, yeah. So this one, this one is about. Uh, it takes place in obviously Mexico, mm. and it's a it's a crew, and they're it's like um, we're seeing like the preparation of like a one of those uh, local news stations, uh-huh. um, and 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 it's focused on a newscaster, and she's very whoever's this actress is plays it really well she's good <laughs> it, she's really good and she's funny and she's like she keeps smelling the microphone yeah, and yeah. she's like what did the other joke. person <laughs> yeah yeah and she like licks like sticks her tongue out and like licks it and then they're like oh we got to go on air and so she she like switches you know switches to <laughs> serious become serious and then she like starts doing the broadcast and even the broadcast i'm like this looks like Something I would watch on like yeah, Mundo or something. It's you know? like it's like so scary, like accurate. That's what made <laughs> yes. it even funnier because as a Latino, because you're like, oh, I've seen Uni- Univision or like Hell Primer yeah. Impacto in the day back then, Hell like yeah. uh, shows Hell where yeah. it was like this over the top, like nosotros tenemos, you know, stuff real serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take themselves so serious, and to see like these these anchors just like talking shit off camera before, because you know that's exactly how it is. Because Spanish people are how it usually is. kind of funny off, uh, you know, on their own and stuff like that. Yeah, they yeah. got like a lot of humor, so I found that even even better. And um, me too. I just thought it was so. I thought it was so fucking charming, like because uh, you got. Yeah. I think Luis is the guy who was directing, or either he was the mm-hmm. cameraman or something like. That. I think he was a producer or something. And he just took the camera. Because he was the one mm-hmm. talking to the the main lady, and then they right. obviously have the the main report, the other the the on the street reporter, and then what happens? Right. And then all of a sudden, and the room starts shaking, and it's an earthquake. An earthquake starts like shaking everything, and and, uh-huh. and like the the building starts like collapsing, and and she eventually like the ceiling falls on her, uh, and then her, we, yeah. we we like. We and then she dies, and then we cut to like the camera point of view that's on its side, and I guess it's Lu- is it Luis who's Luis, there? Luis, I think it's Luis. Yeah, yeah, the guy. Luis is there, and he's like, uh, you know, he's like bleeding and, and injured, and he's like, ah, oh, and he so he gets up and he grabs the camera, um, and so uh, he, I think a, a a team, a rescue team comes. I think for, to, a team like, of four, help. yeah, a team of four rescuers right. show up to get him. They so then you realize like they start so they start attempting to like get out of the building but everything's like rubble and and they're and they're blocked and then you kind of see the outside for a few moments and you see like helicopters so at first i was like was is this like a like post-apocalyptic thing but right. then i realized oh it's it's a it was just an earthquake so they they right. they start the, the the rest of the the segment is them trying to get out of the building right and yeah and, they I, keep and it's because it's not like something you can really sort of go into minutia about because it's basically a to b to c it's nothing like right right super complicated storyline and it reminded me of this movie called aftermath it was a movie that eli roth wrote it was a movie that eli roth started he stars in yeah he stars in it and and it's a it's a shocking movie believe me there there still are movies that could be shocking because that was a it was basically a, a gigantic earthquake I forgot what country they were in. It might have must have been. I, it might have been Brazil or or, or some country, or uh, and it ended up breaking open a prison for the insane. So basically, mm-hmm. it's people trying to survive insane shit. It, it was. It's a pretty. I thought oh, it was I a pretty good movie for the. I didn't even it's, know that was the shot. premise of the movie. I didn't even. Know, I thought it was just about an earthquake. Yeah, no, it's it's cra- it's a oh. crazy movie, dude. It's cra- it's stuff that I was like, oh my god, they put this in a movie, that kind of movie. But it it was fun. Okay. It's called Aftermath or Aftershock or something uh-huh. like that. But anyway, it's with Eli Roth. Go watch the movie. But that reminded me of this because I thought at this moment I was like, oh, they're they're doing uh, 
just a general like terror movie. They're not doing a horror like supernatural thing. I was wrong, but I thought that was so cool that the for the lion's share of it is these people. You're stuck with these people trying to get out of right, a collapsing right. building, and I thought that was right. fuck. It was scary it, to me. That's scary. It was shit. Scary. Have it you was, ever it was well have you ever done. felt? Because yeah. I know we're both from New York City. Have you ever felt a tremor or earthquake here in New York? Um, I have when I, I was a felt, kid. I oh, have. not as a kid. I, when I was a, when I was a kid, I I. I didn't feel it, but I, I, I remember somebody, my, my sister came in screaming from the other room, like, and stepping on it, <laughs> yeah. because I was, I was sleeping funny, on the floor, but yeah, yeah. and she stepped on me, and like, and I was sleeping in my parents' room, uh, and then you were like, ah, and I was like, what happened? And she was like, there was an earthquake, and then there was another one, like, recently, yeah, about at, when, 10 years ago, not that long ago, like that. Yeah, 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 and I was at work, and I was at work, and everybody was like, did you feel it? And I was like, I didn't feel it, man, but... There's so you and I have here. been through the same earthquake because the first time it was a tremor and I was asleep, so I didn't know about that one. Yeah. But the recent yeah. one when you were at work, I was mm -hmm. working on my computer, laying on my stomach on my bed, and I felt it felt like I was on a seesaw, dude. And I was like, "Oh shit!" I'm not, I'm not kidding, because it felt like imagine you're just sort of normal and then your body moves left mm -hmm. to right like you're shaking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not yeah. normal. You know, you're in a building, no. bro. You're like, okay, I'm just sitting down. You don't expect the whole... F it felt like the building was wobbling. And I was like, what the hell yeah. was that? And it only happened for, like, less than a second. But that's enough right. to be like, if this shit was to continue, I'll be inside the floor. I'll oh be in hell God. right now. I'll, like, fall right through the ground. But so, so yeah. seeing this, I was like, I was... I felt just... A, I felt only a little bit of that shit. You know what I mean? And I was scared in this part. Because, like, that shit is scary. Because that's... that's a possibility for anywhere right if you're next to Absolutely. fault lines god forbid like in mexico it happens and stuff like that where people get destroyed i kind of yeah. honestly i thought it was kind of gross that they used real footage of actual but i guess what what can you do yeah, yeah. i guess i think I, for me the, that's a little end, gross right? sometimes yeah. yeah to me that's a yeah. little gross with movies but i mean you know what can you mm -hmm. do if anybody really died okay. for something I, I don't think like but that's just me on a fucking yeah. I, I don't i'm not trying to no, be no, a high horse it. or something yeah i'm not trying to be on a high horse or anything like but i understand as a filmmaker you got to use what you got to use yeah. But I thought it was so cool. But then it ends up going into the supernatural angle. What do you think about that part? I, you know what, I didn't mind it because of the way. Yeah, I thought it was the cool. Type yeah. of the type of it, it was specific to like Latin Mexican folklore or whatever yeah, gods culture, type right. of things. So yeah. I was like, culture. So I was like, this is this is perfect. So eventually, what happens is they they end up uh, one of them ends up getting wounded, and then one of the is one of the the girls i guess she's one of the um the people Work, that uh, the rescuers right yeah rescuers she ends up having to kill one of the guys because the guys like put me out of my misery and i'm so <laughs> good i'm like okay okay and then i think another i think more aftershocks are happening so the way i took it is they end up in this like weird ass like crawl space kind of like catacombs yeah it was in the so ba I'm, under the basement i think under the basement, so I'm assuming like the earthquake, like un un uh whatever, unearthed it. It it, yeah. it unearthed this like opening, this ancient opening that nobody had ever gone into, and it's in this like Mexican town or whatever. So I was like, that's kind of cool. Oh yeah, no, they I end up. It, what did what did yeah. it did it remind you of any film at all, at all? Um, Dust till think. dawn, maybe. <laughs> A little bit. Sure. Yeah, because I thought sure. about that at the end of Dust of Dawn when you see the the bar is oh, over yes, uh fucking yes, yes, pyramid yes, at the yes, end. Yes, so yes, obviously right. it's something from the underground coming up. So that's it's exactly ancient, what I thought it's about. Some ancient underground, right? Evil kind of thing, right? Right. right. So uh, but I thought that was cool. I was like, yes, oh, yeah, an earthquake would un un unearth this, you know. So they end up going in there because then they're like they start seeing like these weird like drawings on the wall, like these ancient drawings. So they're they're like, where the fuck are we? Are we in a basement? Like they're just trying to get out, and eventually they end up coming face to face with like some aztec god and it looked cool um, too. i forgot i forgot yeah and it looked like the typical act god but it was like it came to life and it starts like possessing them you know what i mean i one yeah. of them gets possessed um i forgot the name of the god but he, he possesses i, I won't even guys. say the names because i get paranoid if i say that shit oh okay okay. <laughs> you know I mean? okay dude i don't believe it but i'm scared up, i just don't want to fuck around like you oh fuck around if soon. that shit showed up in my room bro i would die bro <laughs> The way they looked, it was so cool, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, this yeah. is cool." So it, it possesses one of them, and he like starts like he starts like speaking in like demon voice, and then they start saying the name of the god, and then eventually the god sort of like he comes to life, and we we see him, which is what I liked about it is that wow. we actually get to see the god. 
because oh, a yeah, lot of yeah. a lot of movies would be like they just possessed and then you don't really see you know what this the creature is or whatever and so he comes and it's like oh it's a real god and then so um because you only even he, see like I, you don't like in the, it reminded me a little bit of uh the lover Cabin of all Woods? mankind mel oh. gibson's movie what was that movie um what the hell <laughs> was mel gibson's movie what's that apocalypto apocalypto yeah like you don't see right, actual right. ghosts or monster in that but it still has that uneasy feeling of worshiping right, these sort right. of ancient beings like and aztecs stuff. yeah yes, yeah yeah exactly. totally so but, um, but yeah. this one is obviously when it's a supernatural so he starts possessing and they start kill they kill i think they kill themselves and the girl they killed she, each they, other the latino movie they always got to find the way to get a, a naked, <laughs> naked girl in the movie so then, every one of them so then yeah he possesses the girl and then she eventually like takes off her clothes and the cameraman's like oh what's happening yeah. i'm glad and, i'm glad and, it was a woman directing it so it wasn't like some i know. Dude just doing it so right um and so she proceeds to like kill him and like t- uh-huh. rip out his heart and so pretty much the, the movie is is this god coming to like fruition to life and uh who knows what happens who would what happens after that if it goes out into ass, the world and, and takes over the world or something but it just cuts to like an outside shot like you said they used like b-roll from a real earthquake or something mm. and it was just like people saying oh this is the worst thing that ever happened um and they don't know what's coming yeah, yeah it's yeah. like a september something i was like september 11th but uh it was like something 720 and then it's like uh that was like they're saying that was the worst of it but i'm like i'm thinking in my head i'm like it's probably this god is going to be the worst when like oh yeah of course he really comes out into the world and i was like that's a cool ass concept absolutely um, that, I, that's a solid eight out of ten for me too that was a fun one sure. to me especially the ending did heighten it even though i was sort of like expect i was thinking it was gonna be a normal one but then it got into the supernatural but the supernatural was like this really cool kind of stuff you don't see at least in american cinema because mexico has some great horror movies that you obviously yeah, yeah. you don't hear about because you're too busy you know watching united states films or if you try to dabble into international films mexico has some great horror films just Mex- uh, mexican films in general are pretty well done yeah um so what what's your rating for uh for t- uh god of death yeah I give this an a2 this oh. was good man i mean i love the design of the the god the god i love the design yeah, it was great. It's totally great design. Uh, the next one is Techno God, directed by Natasha Kermani. So this is a smaller effort, mm-hmm. actually, but I think it actually has some mm-hmm. pretty. Uh, it, it, this one felt more like a, a funny, not funny, but like a cool gag one because it's so short. Obviously, yeah. they didn't spend the lion's budget uh, on this one, but mm-hmm. I thought the payoff was worth what it was doing with it. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so basically, I'll, I'll get through it. It's a performance artist that is, uh, and this is obviously 1985, so uh, virtual reality is just starting. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know the first time I remember seeing virtual reality. I think there was a place in New York City called, um, uh, in South Street Seaport, there was a sort of mall that they had over there. And people would mm-hmm. put on, you know, these gigantic, like, virtual reality glasses. And they'd be on mm-hmm. these roller, you know, cages on the floor where their feet are moving. So this is stuff that we see now. If you have enough money, you can do VR headsets and stuff like that. So this is sort of the thing yeah. that they're doing where there's this young woman who's doing um, a very realistic take on sort of the art one-woman one, one woman show sort of a, a mm-hmm. art segment that they're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. an art, not our installation, but she's basically saying a speech or something that she's obviously written out, and it's about the right. techno god. And so she puts on this virtual. She has a little ca- uh, a screen behind her that's uh, projecting what's going to be seen inside of her vid- her uh, VR set. She puts on the gloves mm-hmm. that help her feel stuff because we see a little mm-hmm. bit of information from a doctor explaining how the um, how it works, right? Like the gloves, you can yeah, how it works. She does like a little yeah demonstration video, and it's funny. He calls the the goggles. He calls them iPhones. Yeah, I'm like, part. what? I said, I think okay. it's obviously a joke on eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Stuff like, but it was pretty. Clever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she puts on the gloves, and and then she starts doing into this diatribe about like if God is real. So she's going into the technosphere, and the, and the, and the, and the animation is pretty good. The animation would look like shit in real life if it was '80s like VR because the hands yeah. would move really terribly. But yeah, yeah. um, she's uh, it's like I I like that the way that they um obviously they must have done it in post they must have animated it to her movements yeah, yeah. as opposed to her moving to the animation, and the hands are moving around into this sort of desolate like cybernetic VR world VR world yeah. right. And it, it reminded me on, of um uh, Lawnmower Man. Yeah, like, there you go. That, that too. Yeah. Effect. 
Yeah. So uh, I, she's being like blasphemous in this techno space. Like she's like, "Where are you, mm-hmm. God?" She's like, "Call." She's calling out basically the techno god because obviously she thinks that there's no god in the in the real world as well. So she's trying there in the digital world, but then something answers and <laughs> not being very good for her because it tears her ass apart. And I thought that was pretty fun. Like I, it's not a long segment. It's basically like no. sort of just a short one that they got their hands on. But I thought right. it was effective. I thought it was pretty fun. What did I you think it was, of it? I thought it was good. I thought it was good. The only thing is that like the techno guy didn't make sense to me because I'm like, wait a minute. What is what is being what is she like awakening? Like, are there digital gods? Like, I don't get that part. She of pissed it. Like, off I'm the like, matrix. Yeah, because if it's man made, like, what like the, where is it coming from? I'm like, where is the god coming from? So that was like, I'm like, I don't understand where it's coming from, but I still was right. like, oh, this is cool. Um, I thought it was effective. What I liked about this one was that it, it stepped away from like the first person camera it, right. um, where somebody's operating because obviously it's a she's on a stage so it's like they just keep cutting somebody is like set up cameras to record her performance and mm-hmm. it just cuts from the different like I think it was like two or three cameras and so I thought that was cool that it was more like um, stationary it's a, perform- it's a performance shots. art piece I don't even know why I right. think that's the phrase performance art performance art and piece. I thought the, and so I somebody's thought- recording it yeah yeah, and I thought the gore was pretty good. I thought the gore was pretty damn good the for gore that was scene. Because her hand gets so, lopped off. She takes her glove off and her hand is gone because the monster ripped gone. it off. Her leg gets shredded. And, and then the coupe de grace <laughs> is uh, basically they, they try to take that VR helmet off because she couldn't take it off. And it's obviously like a dummy, but it's still pretty good yeah. looking. And all you see are yeah. her eyeballs floating in the middle of the fucking whatever's <laughs> left of her face. And I thought, I was yeah, like, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Like, that's that's yeah, the yeah. gross out moment for this film. Because I don't think there's any other really gross out moment in the film like that, if I can remember. No. But no. Um, I thought that was cool. So I, I would give this one um, like a 6.5 out of 10. I thought it was a pretty you know solid that, short you, one. You know what I thought it was funny, too? Like, the audience, like, nobody did shit. Like they just stood I there and just watched out it. of there. I'm like, because yeah, they, they, they probably <laughs> the thing is part of the show at this point. Yeah, <laughs> they got blood thrown on them. I'm like, bro, at that point, you're like, this is not part of the show. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I I, I, I understand when she's like doing all her shit. She's like, like she does this this cool chant singing thing that I thought it was it was I like the way she did it. Like she right. she has like a little like synthesizer there. I thought that was a cool part. I thought that was like really unique that yeah. they would do that. Um, I gotta tell but you then something. Once, that, go yeah. ahead. But once no, more. no. But once once she starts getting like torn apart, and then like the audience starts getting sprayed with blood, I just found it a little weird that like they just stood there and watched it. And I, I was guess like, that's bro, at joke. this point you gotta leave. Joke, yeah. I guess, but I'm like, I, I don't know. Tell you I, something I guess I saw <laughs> when I was a kid. I was watching one of those. Like yeah. just to go back to the, the the Mexican segment we talked about before. I'm telling you, I don't know if I, I know I saw this, but Spanish television, they would show like. They were didn't censor anything on Spanish TV, really. Like you couldn't see actual like gore and shit. I, although, like like Latino television, like Univision or or Telemundo is what you, at least what we get in the uh, United States in New York City. Mm-hmm. I t- I tell you this to to go with this performance art thing because I saw something on Spanish t- television once. <laughs> this is gonna be a very disgusting story. It was a video, like it looked like CCTV or something. Of like mm-hmm. a school, um, like auditorium, like a gymnasium. I mean, and so yeah. there's people sitting on, on it, and it's horribly. It looks as bad as the VHS on this, right? So mm-hmm. it's like a full of uh, audience of people. This I'm watching this on Spanish television, so I don't know what's going. I don't. Even, I couldn't even understand what they were saying. There's a guy who walks into this room. It's obviously a kids' school, and there's adults sitting on the benches. This guy comes out and he's either naked or something. I can't tell. He's or in white underwear. He holds an object up on his head, and I don't know if he's doing a performance art or something. <laughs> he shouts something to the audience, and then he shoves the thing up his ass in front of everybody. And <laughs> this is on TV. Yeah, because I think this is like a crime that happened. I telling you, oh. I didn't think I didn't make this shit up. I saw it and I was like, I couldn't believe what I was watching. This was like. I was a kid when I saw. I was probably like seven or eight when I saw this on television. Mm-hmm. It, this wasn't made for the TV. This was like a report of a psychopath that did this I somewhere. You. I don't I know you. where. I don't. I tried to look up on the news when this happened just to see. I wasn't thinking this shit up. The people from the audience jumped off that fucking <laughs> off those bleachers That's what I'm and they beat his ass. So I was like, yeah. the fact 
I wish I could find that clip again. It was the f I never laughed so hard as a kid at that shit because it was like, what did I just see? But the fact that this audience just stayed there and it's obviously it's a joke because they, you know, I was expecting them not to get up. I thought they were gonna get like ripped apart too, but um, I thought it was pretty funny. What what was your rating for Techno God? I give it a six. It's a so I, I think it's a six. solid little short. I think yeah. it's a fun, cute short. It's sort of yeah, like yeah. um, it's sort of like if you ever read Mad Magazine. And then you're turning the mm -hmm. pages, and there's like a little Sergio Arones art outside mm -hmm. of the actual main street. I think I think it's a good little, yeah, yeah. You know, a good little. Oh, I miss uh, Mad Magazine cleanser. so much. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I miss Mad Magazine so much. I miss it. <laughs> I know. I used to read oh. it all the time, bro. I used to um, go into the like the little the little corner stores with the magazines, and I just would go straight for it. And oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the next? And whenever, you know, whenever they had like the yeah. alien stuff, or they had um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything of a, like a movie that I liked, like they they were like spoofing it, even though they were just still spoofing it. I still wanted to buy it because I'm like, yeah, it's it's the movie that I like. Felt you know important, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, it was so good. It was good. It was good. I thought it was good. Yeah, for sure. So this leads to my favorite of mm -hmm. all of them in this one um i'm mm -hmm. gonna let you take the role for them this is the one called dream kill directed by scott derrickson this is the director of the black phone which i thought was an okay film i don't understand people kind of going crazy for that film but he that also did dr strange was, was a sort of a whatever movie for me um sinister i liked it simply uh, because of ethan Hunt, ethan hawk in it yeah. that's why i liked it but he was i didn't think he was also in uh black phone too i, think. I know so um, He's the strongest to be part honest, in anything that he's in. That's sure, what I'm absolutely. Saying. To be honest, I think Black Phone is Scott Derrickson's best film. Okay. I enough. think that's his best film. Like, um, Doctor Strange, you know, it's a Marvel thing. I don't I think it was yeah, great. I, I didn't even feel it that feel it that much. And his uh, movie, The Exorcism um, of Emily Rose, is what got him famous because I remember oh, that that's shit what was got him hacked. Like, he did a he did a, he did another movie. That was shit, but it had a great premise. It was, and it took place in the Bronx. It was the one um, with Eric Banner. Oh, that was the cop, the thing that was based on a true yes. story. Yes, that he's like a spiritual, uh, supernatural detective. So he did that one, and I, I remember being like, "Oh, this is a cool," because I remember I, I had a script that I always had. Like you probably read it, where I, uh -huh. I had a character that was like a he was a detective, but he was like supernatural detective. Yeah, it's and great I was script. like, "This movie did it," and then. Uh, yeah. But this was based on a true story, which is complete bullshit. I'm like, come on, bro. Um, but I'm like, and it took place in the Bronx, bro. And I was like, oh, this is a cool movie. And he just, that movie was so much. That was shit, bro. It was shit. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I almost gotta watch that movie. You're gonna see how bad it is. When I heard it was in the Bronx, I was bad. Like, it's uh, bad. Let's but get anyway, into Dream Kill. I, tell me, tell me sure. about this movie because I fucking so, loved this shit. I, this was so, right up my alley, dude. I I knew it was right up your alley because it just just the the visions the vision portion oh, yeah. of it I'm like this is he likes this these types of like montage like weird views like point of oh, view yeah. things that looks like kind of like creepy and like has film grain and like um so this 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 story is about um it starts with we, we're seeing like a vision of something like kind of it's a home invasion right. And we're like at the point of view of the killer and and we're like we're going through a house and we're seeing this killer kill someone and we're, we're going through the steps he cuts off this guy's fingers he's chasing him through the house the guy's like wiping blood over the the walls and we're following it but the way it's shot it's shot in a, it doesn't look like vhs it looks more like film mm -hmm. it looks like 16 millimeter film or something right. and it has like this weird music and sound and we're like we're like the point of view of it, and which is a little creepy because I'm like, fuck, we're in the point of view of the killer. Mm -hmm. And then it cuts to... Very, very much like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer in some parts. Right, right. And then it cuts to... um, It cuts to the house. But now this time is it's when the, the cops are in there. It's like the mm -hmm. aftermath of it. So we got a for and forensic we... photographer as the POV for this part. Right. So the, the forensic photographer is the POV. He's like recording, and then we we meet like the main character, which is played by Freddie Rodriguez. That's his name, right? Freddie Rodriguez. Is that him? Well, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen them that dude. Oh, well, that's Freddie Rodriguez, and, bro. He didn't even he look. He fell the off same. the face. He fell off the face. Holy of the shit! There was a point where he was wow. like kind of like coming up, like he was is in a the, lot is, of movies. That's not the guy from um, uh, Planet Terror, is it? Yeah, that's him. That's Holy him. fucking macaroni! Are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> 
No, bro. That's why I, 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 I recognize him. I that man like, turned into shit. an adult, bro. He turned into an adult <laughs> adult. <laughs> Holy shit. Whoa. Yeah, because I, I remember him from um Six Feet Under, which is like big right. star and all. That's where like he broke out. And then he then he was like in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. He was kind of like big. He was in like M. Night Shyamalan's movie, uh, Lady in the Water. He was in a bunch of shit. And then he just kind of like fell the fuck After off. After Planetary, he, he vanished for me. I'm not sure. He vanished. He, he, Maybe he was on uh uh what's his name? I think he uh, was uh, uh, the Spy Kids director, Rodriguez. Wasn't he on like one of the yeah, dust yeah. no he wasn't on Dustle Dawn show, was he? I think he was just on Planet Terror, bro. And I don't know if he ever used them again. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez's but, um, channel was like what UPN was for like African Americans, bro. Oh, Any it would okay. take <laughs> Oh, that was his character's name in Planet Terror was El Ray, which became El Ray, his, right. his, his channel, television station. Um but then he sort of fell off, right? I think he did. He ended up doing like a lot of television, like like okay. network Fair television. Enough. Hey, listen, shit. you got to work. Who am I to talk? You know what I mean? But I always thought he was a good actor, though. Yeah, yeah, he's a good um, actor. But and, no. he, and he's good in this. He's good in this, you know. And um, so and anyway, we follow him. He's a detective, and he's like, he's uh, he's like walking the scene, and he's like talking with like the the forensic guy, and then the guy's like, guy's like, hey, isn't this is this the same? murder that someone sends you a video like a couple days ago or he says it he's like yo this yeah, yeah. is someone sent me a videotape in the mail three days before like, two, three days before this and, and it's the same the way the person ended up dead and was killed i watched the person do that and they're like that's impossible the person just died a couple hours ago yeah the, he like, asked the guy specifically he said what he the asked time like the death? examiner and, and they were like, like two hours three, ago yeah two hours ago yeah, something yeah. like that and so, like, it's already, that's an interesting premise. It's almost like a Stephen King sort of, like, novel premise. Do you know what I mean? Sure, sure. And to me, then it leads to the, the cause, and, the, and that leaves, like, the cop perplexed, right? right. So then it goes to the, the second thing. And I'm telling you this. This second dream sequence is my favorite part of this whole film. It's my... It just, I might have missed... Did I mix that up? I think he kills a woman first. He kills a woman in the first one. The, the second was with a guy. Uh, yeah. That's this, the one where he cuts the fingers off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he cuts the throat and stuff. And he's like throwing mm. the guy around. And the guy's flying in slow motion, yeah, crashing yeah, 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 into yeah, shit. Yeah, that was good. The yeah. so and the sound um, design on this is so good. It's so eerie because it's all quiet. Mm. You don't you don't hear any natural noise of the whatever's going on in the house. And it has that sixteen millimeter look. I'm telling you, when I saw this shit, I had to wa I watched it like twice that part just alone because I was mm. like I was in love with how this whole sequence was done. It was so right. fucking eerie. I was like creeped out watching it. And I'm not creeped out by any like, horror movies, really. But this part bothered the shit out of me because like it, he just comes and he just kills that dude, knocks him around, cuts his fingers off, and you just hear this like weird, like like high pitch, like tone that keeps happening through it. I, I it's a I, I gotta say it's a, a a fucking it's a piece of art. That little one scene right there, I would have loved to see that shit. Like when I saw that part, I was like, this shit should be a fucking a two-hour film i would watch this movie in a second but um yeah so right. it cuts that and then it goes to the next segment where the cops like seeing once again like what the hell's going on with this shit mm -hmm. yeah yeah he's he's like dude this is somebody sent me a, a tape with and the same murder three days ago like i saw the murder but this was person was just killed recently again so at that point you're like what the f what's going on <laughs> like oh. is there some time traveling shit happening or mm -hmm. what what it has to be something supernatural so eventually um uh he finds they... the return address on it right or where it was mailed from so he checks the cctv uh i guess right. there's a camera right, that's right, right. above uh the mail the mail the mailbox box. and then and they, they set they it up to some... find... right they see someone that to come came to drop off the the you know the videotape that was sent to him and so mm -hmm. they like they like stake it out like there's the, the only weird thing about this there was one cop staking it out i'm like yeah. what there's a lot of weird things like, that these bro. cops do in this movie this doesn't make any sense <laughs> i'm like one cop so the so, so the guy comes so the perpetrator comes to drop another videotape off and but the cop is like waiting for him and as soon as he drops it off he like you know sets the siren off and he goes and chases him down and then he arrests him there's, there's an even more up. colossal blunder that you know that happens after that from one cop, but um, yes, yeah, so he chases the guy. And who is he? <laughs> so, so he's uh, he's uh, he's the son. Whose son is he? Bro? He's, he's a goth kid. 
He's the son okay. of the forensic uh, cameraman. He's the son and I got to tell you, cameraman. automatically I knew it was the forensic cameraman that was the bad guy. As soon as like the <laughs> second segment came up, I was like, he's the killer. Because like, he's the only guy with a camera. You know what I mean? Like, it has to be yeah. him. Like, even though we haven't seen yeah, the guy yeah. yet, I knew yeah, the yeah. person taking the camera because the guy's talking to him. I'm like, it's mm-hmm. it's this guy. It has to be this guy. Like, And it's not like I'm some brilliant like guy. But you just kind of, the you know, you... Um, you That's the only way of... the movie's gonna continue. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. somebody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they, so, um, so go ahead. No, he has a son, and he's like goth son. He's like all like goth in black. He looks like the crow, bro. Yeah, English. basically. And and he's uh, and so they take him in, and, he, and the father's. So at first, I was like, wait, how does this guy know him? And then he was like. Then, he, then the Freddy Rodriguez says, "Oh, your son." So I'm like, "Oh, that's his son." I didn't get that at first. I think I was like a little bit distracted. Right. Or something I, I, and I, I also think the that. guy was a cop, but then quit to be a forensic photographer. Right, right. That's what happened. Which is weird. But anyway, um, so then he's like, "Tell him, you know, tell him where you, you know, where you got the video." And the son is is very like he's look he's very strange, you know, and he's just just staring, and he's like, um, "Oh, I dreamed it," and. Wait, wait. He dreamed it, and then it, it was recorded. The camera recorded his dream. Mm-hmm. Oh, because the, the the father bought the father's camera recorded the dream. He right. bought a camera. They had an argument about like the the son wanted the father to buy a beta uh, a regular VHS cam, yeah, and then it he said was like, "Beta, look beta better. cam's better." And he's like, "No, it doesn't." And they had this weird like back and forth of like, "Okay." Although so I did hear back then that beta was better looking than regular uh, VHS yes, back then, probably by like two pixels or something. <laughs> but um, but. But uh, uh, so the so so that kind of it tells you that the father has a camera at home. So that's the that's the the camera that's recording the son's dreams. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. he's like, I'm having these dreams, and that's the my camera's recording them, and that's what I'm dropping off to the Pop cops. Pop is like, yeah, you know I mean? get the fuck out of here. He doesn't believe him for one second. <laughs> right. It's but like the, psychic dreams or something. Right. The, right. For, the forensic photographer takes him out of the room. He says, listen, you know, what my son says is true. It happens. And the cops right. still can't fucking right. believe it. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Until they receive a third tape, right? Right. Or, he or, says, or they don't he receive tells a third tape. The, he says, I have the gift. Yeah. Right? And then he says, my son also has it. So the cops like, Freddie Rodriguez is like, the f- what do you? No, he saying, said he bro? says a cousin had it and his grandfather. Oh, had it, okay. Or his okay, grandmother had okay. it or something like that. He doesn't have it himself, right. but he believes that it's real. He doesn't have it. He's like, so my, son, I think my son has it. So, so Freddie Rodriguez is like, you're crazy, bro. And so, um, I think, yeah, there is a final tape. There is a final right? tape where they have somebody being disem- de- dismembered and de- decapitated. Right, right. So, so he's like, go watch the tape. Um, I don't know. So, so, so the cop, um. Oh, the tape that he dropped off bef- when they arrested him. Right, right. That's the one right the, the 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 post office is like we got they got. I'm like, why wouldn't they just grab that shit? Right, make the post office get it right there. But anyway, they sent it to him, and they're like, the post office was able to recover the tape. So then Freddie Rodriguez is like, what's going to be on this? And he's like, just watch it. It's better if you watch it. So he goes to watch it, and then he sees the the lady getting dismembered. Right. Yeah. So Freddie Rodriguez is like, we're going to keep your son here. And we're gonna go to the lady's house before it happens, and we're gonna like stake it out, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's there with the cameraman and the guys, and for some reason the cameraman is recording him, but mm-hmm. you know it's the movie, whatever. And then and he's like, "Can you just put down the camera for a minute?" And then we're and, and then he puts it down, but he's still literally <laughs> pointed at him. So I'm like, Freddie Rodriguez is like, he's not aware that it's he's being filmed, but uh, it was kind of funny. That part yeah. for me, I was like, that's funny. But anyway, so Freddie Rodriguez is like, he's confronting him. He's like, how come you didn't tell me? Um, what I forgot what I forgot what he 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 reveals. I'm I'm just I'm drawing a blank right now. Why he quit to be a cop? Oh no, he okay. found out he was looking up information of the of the three victims and how they were connected. Right, two right, women right, that he right, had sexually right. assaulted, and the attorney was the guy that he killed. Right. Right, so the, he was like, yeah, that was so. the that's the big blunder I'm talking about. That he's like confronting this guy in his fucking car in front of the house instead oh, okay. of yes. confronting him at yes. the fucking you know police uh, precinct and shit. That's true, and I'm like, what the fuck? But then also like the way it's done, it's like, bro, really? You're gonna wait all this time? He drives up, and then he's like, I gotta tell you something, and the guy's like, all right, and he's still recording the camera. I mean, he's still recording. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, 
but obviously because there won't be a movie if he turns it off but um that was a good effect so, though with the shot in the face that was yeah, fucking good dude that, that was, was really cool good. so he's like so he's like confronting him and he's telling him why you know what happened um and then i think he even says you did it right i think he tells yeah, him yeah like, yeah yeah so he says you did it as soon as he does that he just gets shot in the head and it's like an, it's like done in real time yeah, like yeah. You just see Fred Rodriguez is looking at him, and then all of a sudden, a bullet hole appears in his head, and he just falls back and dies. And he saunters so, right into the house of that woman, and he kills her. He just right. kills her, and then he, he comes back her. into the the station, and it leads to like the kid wakes up. He looks into the camera because mm-hmm. you know he just had a dream, and it's a bugged right. out scene where he's watching himself sleep, and it's going back and forth. And it's really, I loved how bugged out that was. And, I did. and then it leads to like a almost like a maniac cop two sort of. I don't know if you ever seen maniac cop movies, but there's a maniac cop two where he does an assault at like a police precinct. This is like the most uh-huh. the most bizarre, one of the, the craziest shits I've ever seen in film. But that happens here. It's not to that amount, but I thought it was like effective at how they did that. Yeah, yeah. It reminded me of the Terminator two, the first Terminator. Well, yeah, obviously, like, yeah, that too. Wasn't. That's probably what they were going but, for um, more actually. But um, it, I, at first I was a little confused about like how how we're seeing the vision but then i'm like okay the camera recorded it 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 throws you off because you're seeing it from two perspectives you're seeing it from what's happening in real time and then you're seeing the vision at the same so it makes you think somebody's editing this video together right so you're like wait a minute but then you're they're just showing you what the camera saw yeah what the dream was and you're like oh that's kind of cool because then he's like he knows exactly what's going to happen and even even tells his father he's like i know how this is going to end because the father comes in and really gonna kill him i'm like that's oh, yeah. your son bro i know right so he's like he, he he points the gun at him he's like all right i'm gonna kill you and he's like no you're not i know how this ends and then as soon as he's gonna shoot he gets shot mm-hmm. and then he like well they shot they shoot at the door and he comes out and he starts oh, shooting shoot at at everybody door. at him and he, he doesn't get shot until kills, this kid though dude he kills like eight cops bro i'm like <laughs> not one cop can take him down bro not one, in but one I guess narrow hallway, I guess, they couldn't take this dude down. A, a police dude, precinct full of cops, they couldn't, they couldn't do it. I'm like, come on, guys. It's, it was weird. It was weird because, but I kind of like that about. Yeah, I was fine with it. I was just like, I know he's gonna. I, know I it's liked it because for the movie, I know it's because he was like, he was very crazed. So you're like, you can see like how he was just taking out these cops. But the way he was killing the cops was cool because he wasn't just shooting them. He was like, he took one cop's like knee out and then he shoots him in the head with, uh-huh. and then he takes and then he the way well, he was well killing done. everybody well, nice and graphically done people's heads getting blown up yeah, it was done really well that part oh, yeah and and, and then, then so he, finally finally he's like he kills that he kills like eight cops then he's about to walk out and then he like walks towards the camera and then all of a sudden he gets shot and like a bullet goes right through his head and he falls and then it reveals that his son shot him Right, his son is and his son is like his son is just like completely depressed and out of it, and it's like crying right. at the end, and it cuts off and it goes to the last segment. Brother, that's a that's a nine out of ten for me, man. I lo- I don't know. I just like maybe that? it hit everything that I like because I like cops, supernatural. Mm-hmm. Sh- I don't like cops. I mean, I don't mean like I like cops in general. I'm mean saying I like cop supernatural <laughs> horror cop bo- stories, movies and shit. Yeah. And yeah. I, I love the way that they used the, the first person POV stuff in this. I thought it was just super solid. So that was like a total nine out of ten for me. I would fucking watch this movie in a second. Just how well how no, well it made was it good. was. I it, honestly it felt, to me it's it's yeah. the most entertaining thing I've seen Scott Derrickson do for myself. I understand like there's a lot of yeah, yeah. good material in his other films. That's why like um I think like his the home movies like Sinister wasn't a good movie, but Ethan Hawke was great in it. And uh, like the short movies that were in that movie were great, the way that they were done because yeah, they were very yeah. eerie. Um, yeah. But like the Black Phone, like Ethan, they still underused Ethan Hawke in the movie, and I thought it was the movie wasn't really that special. But technically, it was probably the best movie he had made to that point. Um, and then this, like, this but, movie, yeah, this movie was definitely very Scott Derrickson because uh-huh. it had all his hallmarks. It had the home movies or like the visions, yeah, you're right, yeah, and then it. And then it had the premonition. There's always a character in his movies that have, like, in Black Phone, the whole movie's about premonition, right? Like, I think, uh, was it was it the sister that kept having dreams about where his, yeah. where he was, like, being mm-hmm. captured? And I felt like that's what the son was kind of, like, has premonitions. And then... Um, he's supposed so to... He's talking about making a sequel to it in the world of the Black Phone. And I'm like, what? To me, now that's too much. Oh, it's... um. Of extended universe shit, and I'm like, well, what's the extended universe it's, of it's, fucking Black Phone? You keep getting phone it's calls. It's based on a. It's based shit? on a. A short story a by jo, uh, yeah. um, Joe. Joe Hill. Joe Hill. Joe Hill. Yeah, I'm like. Ooh. So, 
So Stop just leave it shit. at that. Yeah, leave I it know. at that. It's sick it's, enough. You got you made um, this short. This short is good enough for a feature film. You know, enough with this. Oh, uh, the only somebody thing... gets a phone call from hell. Like, who, yeah, who gives stupid. a shit or whatever? But I, I, I'm, I'm here talking positively about this one. I thought this was a no, no. This, this one, this one was solid. This was good. The only thing I didn't, I didn't understand. Freddy Rodriguez's fully. look is that what? No, no, no. He was, <laughs> he was good in it. I'm like, I'm, I'm glad to see no, he him, was good bro. In it, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 um, bro. I like to see him getting some I, food on the table, brother. <laughs> but uh, I didn't understand like how the thing, how the the camera and the dreams worked. Like, yeah. how did that work? I think it's just a style just, thing. I I, I found it thing. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's interesting, but like it'll be it'll be cool to know like how is that working? Like how is it, how is any camera just recording? I assume the all this stuff was edited for Rory to watch. I wasn't sure, but I guess now that you explain that, this is just a tape that was taping over the Rory thing. I guess it makes sense. Right, right. But um yeah, what 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 would your rating be for this one? Um, probably eight eight point five. Yeah, what what do you think 8. was 5. the best segment throughout the whole film though? Um, hmm, that's 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 a good question. I would say this one, Dream Kill, and I like the first two. Wake. I mean, and... I like the first one, Wake, and then the one that continues it. Ambrosia. Um, okay. Ambrosia, and then a really close. Third is God of Death. Yeah, I think I were I think we're the same thing. I think like the like Rory, God of Death is right up there. I think Rory's right the last there. one and, and tech and Techno God is before that one. Actually yeah. no, I think I might I think it's it's um I think since there's more no, I think I like the Techno God more than than uh, the Rory one, the one with the wraparound story. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I've kind of seen that already before. But um, I I, yeah. I agree with you that I, th- for me myself, I think this one is number one. I think Wake and Ambrosia is the second, and obviously uh, God of Death is third. Uh, but I think they're all pretty yeah, yeah. damn good, well well made short I films mean, for this one. They were all good. Even the wraparound story was good. Uh-huh. Even though you kind of don't really know what's going on until like the very end when all mm. shit starts breaking, like all hell starts breaking loose. Yeah, and even that was cool. Like. The guy goes in and it has like this like tentacle thing that looks like kind of like the thing, and it starts you know, and then it just turns into like kind of a standard monster thing where yeah, you like yeah, yeah. obviously everyone's gonna die. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like and like you said, the thing where he's it's like, like you're watching the, the the first fifteen minutes of another horror movie, like the first right, 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 right. So right. it just sort of ends. And it was it was it was building up to that the thing. The thing that was cool about the whole wraparound story thing was the way it was done. Like right. Yeah, yeah. The the guy. The, they cared the host, about it. They cared about the way it looked. They cared about how they look. Even when they were interviewing the one lady, that she kept talking about like what happened, like the way they shot that. It looked like that interview type style, like from the eighties when you would watch those type of things. Like that's what I really loved about it was like, yeah, the way it, they they packaged it into this fake documentary infomercial type of thing that looked like it just literally just pulled it out of like nineteen eighty five. Yeah, so I was I like, it, it was solid. I think the whole fucking, uh, I was pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed this movie. And it's not, and I don't know whether because I had low um, expectations or not, but this is certainly more than any low expectations to be bothered with. I thought that was actually, was just, I think there was care and thought put into each of these shorts. Like they actually gave there was, shit. Because it's not there far was along care. before the last one came out. You know what I mean? The last one came out. No, no, it's year not. Or something, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, it was really recent. And I think I think with this one, what they had was like they had the stories. Yeah, all the stories were good, and then they had all the performances were good too. Like yeah. I didn't think there were any bad performances in mm. in any of these segments. Like usually there's like some like you know kind of like cheesy ones, and but everybody was great performance. Yeah. I'm like, bro, this is this is exactly what you need to do. And I'm special like, special effects that's were why solid. I'm, yeah, special effects were solid. It's Sound like, design, everything it nev- great in this. Like like. You don't need to have a huge budget because it already looks shitty because it's it's VHS eighty five. You know, it's trying to it's trying to give it that old found footage look. So right. you could you could like you don't have to have like super huge budget, but even though they they probably did it, it still looked pretty good. Like the production design, everything, and then on top of that, it, it just it was just entertaining. You know, like uh-huh. you were into every story. Like this, sometimes when I watch like anthologies, and I'm like. After the third one, I'm like, ah, oh, this is sucks. I lost interest <laughs> yeah. in it. But this yeah. one, I never lost interest in it. And I like the fact that they, I don't know if they've done this in the other ones where, like, they they start one segment and then they skip, like, they continue it 
two later seconds on. later. Like, they might have, but I can't a... remember it. This is the first okay. time I'm like, oh, like it was. I was like actively looking to seeing the second half of the part of it. You know what I mean? Right. I was like, oh shit, so I thought that because was... I didn't know it was gonna happen. Yeah. Me neither. I didn't know it was gonna happen. I thought that was a really good way to hook people in because then you're like, oh fuck, you know, I get to see what happened or like another another side of it. And again, the, the biggest thing that surprised me about this movie was the ratings of it. On, yeah. on like IMDb, yeah, that's kind of sad. I'm like, these this, people are it's like, so you know, low. I think I'm it's like, one of the, I think it's the strongest yeah. one since the first film, honestly. So it's weird yeah. that you know people, I guess, didn't connect with it. I don't know what the, I don't, and you know, it's probably got to be for the dumbest reasons. But obviously, uh, people, art is subjective, so whatever. Of course. But I think it, I think it's a a solid film from uh, with solid stories and it was made by solid directors, honestly. Sure, and then. Obviously, you know someone like Scott Derrickson is yeah. a pretty big name at this point. Like, uh-huh. and he and he, he escaped to the grasp of uh, Disney to actually yeah. make a hit film like The Black Phone. So he's not very he's luckier than most of directors that work sure. with Disney who sort of like suddenly disappear and you never hear about them anymore. But yeah, I think I think Scott Derrickson has a has a has a good solid footing with making more stuff. You know. Yeah, but what what surprised me is that he like threw his hat into this. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, at this I mean, point, I'm sure they like were like, here's bit... here's twenty thousand dollars to make a short. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, and, and even the guy, uh, the guy who directed the wraparound story, David Bruckner. I've heard that name before. I know that he's name done, too. Yeah. He's done some movies. Uh, what movie has he done? The Signal. I think you told me about that movie. The Signal. Oh, was that that was the okay? That was the one with the three stories in it. The oh, signal. he did the Night House. The Night House. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's a that, good director too. Then. Oh, and The Ritual, which I liked, which yeah, he did for uh, yeah, Netflix. A fantastic so he's, a monster. This design guy in that is movie. actually. Oh my god, it was. So this guy is actually pretty. Uh, he's he's done some pretty good work. Okay, so they had some good directors in this one too. Yeah. Mike so, P. Nelson, I don't, I don't know his, I don't know. I thought that was the guy from uh, Mystery Science Theater, but I guess because oh. like he didn't direct this shit. But um, yeah, I think this solid, solid outing for this, especially this film series. This is the sixth movie in the series, um, and obviously yeah. I think it's gonna have a better chance of being a good movie um, when it's different directors involved. So luckily they actually sure. did it good with this outing. You know what I like about like. Even though I haven't liked and haven't watched most of these, I like that they just keep making them because yeah, I'm yeah. like, at least at it's least a good it's outlet. New, it's a good outlet to just have, to, you know, have like a chance to have good stories. You know what I mean? Even yeah. if sometimes they suck, but at least it's doing something. It's just it's just an ongoing thing. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like Saw where it's just like the same shit over and over again. Right, <laughs> but it's right. like. It's giving you it's giving you opportunities to tell new stories and in this specific style because it has a specific style. It's found footage and it's VHS, so it has to look a certain way. So it, it gives you parameters to work in, but then it also lets you kind of like do whatever you want. So I kind of like this. It's just it's cool, and it, the fact that it's on Shutter, like uh-huh. the next one is gonna come out on Shutter too, and like you just watch it right away. You know? Yeah, I I honestly think like honestly I came in not expecting much from this film, and I was pleasantly surprised with what. I saw with this movie, and I'm and I'm. I hope more people watch. I know a lot of people don't get the Shutter, but Shutter's cheap. It's a Shutter. It's a yeah. cheap app to get, um, and it's worth it. They have some good movies on it, um, and this they is got, certainly they one got, of them. They've upped their their content. They have good Absolutely. movies, and they have good original content, like original documentary series. Mm-hmm. Um, they, like I told you, like last year they did this whole thing of like the top. 100 horror films and they did it like every week they would release a new one they got like 19 and it was hour like, documentaries on <laughs> yeah and it was like it was like search of and, darkness and i was just, like let me watch this like this is five oh, hours that's, long that's too long that's too long but like <laughs> the one, the one about, john like, carpenter talk about halloween for 20 hours yeah i know <laughs> right but like the one they did about the halloween like i mean the horror movies was like it was cool and then they had like they had actual like good people talking about it, like real yeah, yeah. horror directors and people in the horror industry and actors. And so I was like, their stuff is not, it's not, they're no slouch. Like they do like Absolutely. really good production design. Like I told you, they had that one series called, um, what is it called? Cursed. Mm-hmm. And it goes, With it's like very, it's like, right? it's like 45, maybe like half hour episodes. And they go, yeah, one exorcist was one of them where they go into different movies that were apparently cursed like they had one on the crow that i told you about um, which was really good they had one on the twilight zone movie 
and it, it, they do it really well. So I, again, Shutter has a lot to offer, and they have Joe Bob Briggs shit. Absolutely. I kind of watch sometimes, but he just <laughs> he just plays horrible movies, bro. But um, yeah, he's gonna do. You know what he's gonna do for Halloween? Guess Halloween. He's doing Halloween three. <laughs> Oh, he's doing Halloween. No, he's doing the first one. Yeah, I'm like, bro, we've seen this so many times, yeah. bro. His his hatred for Halloween three is, almost has to be like a, it has to be like a joke really? or something. Because I mean, like, whatever. I don't know. He, he I didn't know that he movie, hated it. but he'll watch like Hogzilla, whatever the fucking. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, w- whatever. Dude. I don't want to. Get, I want to get upset <laughs> talking about that shit. But yeah, I, uh, my rating for this film, I would give it a an eight out of ten. Almost surviving an earthquake until a naked woman cuts your heart out and feeds it to an ancient Aztec god. What rating would you give VHS 85? I give this a solid 7.8. So with that, yeah. Deckard, give me one final word. Um, VHS 87. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> awesome.